What's up, Danksters? Welcome back to a brand new video. I made a video six months ago on Bluey about how and why I love the show so much and that it was really something special. But the entire time I was making that video and watching the show, I kept coming back to a single thought. Why is there no Bluey video games out there? If Bluey had came out a couple years earlier, no doubt in my mind it would have gotten a 3DS title, a lot like Disney shows often did at the time. Well, earlier this year, a Bluey game was rumored, and after waiting what felt like forever, we finally got it. And that game was Bluey Let's Play on Android and iOS. Bluey Let's Play was released around August of this year by Budge Studios. I don't know what else Budge Studios has done, but they did this game and I know that for sure. And while this game is a nice distraction, this is far from what I expected the Bluey game would be, especially the first one. I don't know, this just really wasn't up my alley and it also doesn't help that it's locked behind a paywall, so uh, that also kind of shoots it down. I'm sure any kids will get a lot more enjoyment out of it than I did. I mean, this is not really toward my demo graphic and neither is the next game but but nah 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 the game that i was waiting for and the game that you most likely were waiting for was just around the corner now before we start into the actual game i just want to make it very clear that this game is not marketed toward me it is a licensed kids game so it doesn't have the biggest budget so there's going to be issues regardless and we should just have fun with it let's just do that come on why not so before the game starts it wants you to pick which character you're going to be you can choose between the entire healer family. Bluey, Bingo, Bandit, and Chili. The majority of this playthrough I chose Bluey. Well, because it is her game and she's also my favorite. There's also a second player here and that's my girlfriend and she chose Bingo because that's her favorite. The story is set up here like you decided to watch a couple episodes and I actually think that's a really nice touch for this game. There are four episodes you'll go through in this game but I think the coolest part about that is that each episode is consistent with one another and they follow one continuous story arc which is a first First for Bluey to my knowledge. So Holiday, which is the first episode, starts out with Bluey and Bingo rushing into their parents' room, waking them up excited to spend their time on Holiday. Bluey presents a sticker book with everything they would like to do on Holiday. On top of plans to hang out with Muffin at the park, have Granddad pay a visit, then at the end of the day a trip to the beach. However, since the house is dirty because the girls were playing zoo, they need to clean it first. So after doing that for a bit, a loose balloon is found, which leads to the game Keepy Yuppie. And it's here right now that at at the end of each chapter, you'll unlock a new minigame to play, and you can play these around the level in certain areas when the game allows it. So playing Keepy Uppy for a little bit, the balloon gets stuck in the box, and after knocking it down, an old picture of Bandit falls out, which reveals an old treasure map on the back of it. However, the map is ripped up, in three parts to be exact, and it turns out that Uncle Stripe and Uncle Radley have the other two parts of the map. This excites the girls, and they decide to dedicate the entire holiday to finding out what the treasure is, ending the episode. Rescue is the next episode. It starts out with Geki being stuck to the ceiling and the girls are patiently waiting to catch him before they go to the park. They're going to the park because that's where Stripe will be with the next part of the map and also they have a play date with Muffin. When the healers get to the park, they get a little lost because they don't know exactly where Muffin and Stripe is at. So getting to the top of the slide tower, they find out exactly and meet him over there. And after playing Ground as Lava for a little bit and getting our own costumes to play Rescue the Princess, Stripe then gives us his part of the map, making Radley's the final one. Chatterman is the next episode and it starts out with the girls drawing when all of a sudden Radley shows up at the door. But because Geki is still on the ceiling from last episode, Bandit asks if he could go around the back. Agreeing, we go to the backyard to find that Uncle Radley is not there. Turns out because the sprinkler system is on, Uncle Radley doesn't want to go through it because it'll mess up his hair. Even though this game at time will have you do meaningless tasks, I think it's kind of funny how they poke fun and jab old game design like that even though they do the exact same thing in it. Well, after doing that, Uncle Radley says he has the last piece of the map, plus a late Christmas present for the girls. A brand new Chattermax. Bandit and Chili are just thrilled that the girls received this, but quickly it's time to do stuff for the Chattermax, like feed it a bunch of things like fruit and flowers and stuff. But when you finish it, Radley then gives you his piece of the map, completing it. Until Chattermax eats it and runs away with it, having us give chase. A really neat twist to getting the last piece of the map, I'd say. Once the map is completed, it turns out the treasure was buried at the creek the 
entire time. Ending the episode. The final episode, Treasured, starts out with the granddad showing up at the house. The girls would like to go up to the creek to find out what the treasure is, but before they can do that, they have to play Magic Xylophone. Side note here, I really love it when the granddad plays Magic Xylophone and he shakes as he's trying to hold still. It's, uh, it's a really cute touch that they added. After playing Magic Xylophone for a few and gathering some supplies from the house, we then head on to the creek. And after running through it and cleaning up the garbage, we finally find the treasure spot. The excitement is building up for everyone, and once it's dug up, it turns out it was just a old toy. But to be exact, it was Bandit Stripes and Radley's favorite toy. Because the three kept fighting over who could play with the toy, their dad was going to take it away for them. So to keep it safe, they decided to bury it. The plan was to dig it back up one day, but they just forgot about it. After Bandit is done telling that story, Bingo loves it. However, Bluey is a little disappointed. To her, she just spent her entire holiday digging up an old toy and that there wasn't any real treasure to be found. But Bandit says that treasure doesn't have to be something shiny or gold, but that it's just special because of memories connected to it. Then they reminisce over what we just played through. Bluey realizes that the memories were the treasures, and with that, it's time to go to the beach to finish up the holiday. But not right before Geki has time to fall from the ceiling, finally. Celebrating that, they go to the beach wrapping up the game. And no, seriously, like, this is the end of the game, because like when you get to the beach, it's literally just you playing at the beach. All that work. Now go enjoy yourself, man. But anyway, other than the story, what does this game have to offer? Well, through the footage, you've probably seen me open up the scrapbook so many times, and you can see that there is a lot of stuff to collect in this game. Now, it may seem like there's a lot, but these areas are small, and all the collectibles are pretty much close by. I think the biggest problem you'll have is finding the flowers. I didn't even know you could do anything with the flowers till, like, the very end of the game. It took my girlfriend and I roughly three hours to beat the game, and that's just because we're adults, you know, sophisticated gamers and all. But I imagine if you were a kid, it would take a lot longer. And also, they could probably get a lot more longevity out of the game than a couple of adults can. Now, I did want to talk about the voice acting real quick. Just kind of wanted to slip it in here real quick. Now, every cast member does come back to reprise their roles as the characters. However... Some lines feel like they're ripped straight from the show and just implanted into the game. Some lines are brand new recorded and you can definitely tell because the microphone quality is just not the same. Like again, a part in the Chattermax episode where Chili is speaking but her microphone sounds wildly inconsistent compared to the rest of the cast there saying their lines. I just got a blowout. Oh dear, wouldn't want to ruin your perfect do. We'll come save you. I definitely know little kids won't pick up on microphone quality, but it is something I noticed and something I just wanted to point out. What I thought was really funny is that when the Bluey game came out, which didn't come out that long ago, came out on November 17th of this year, it was really impossible to find. I couldn't find it anywhere. I wanted to get a PS5 copy of the game because that's what I play most of my games on. It's what I record most of my footage on. It's just I wanted the PS5 version. And out of all my Walmarts, all my GameStops, and all my local stores, I was only able to find one copy of the game, and it was for the Switch. And I didn't want a Switch copy. Later down the line, I want to get one, but I didn't want one right now. So I just think it's really funny that this kid's game was, like, super hard to find at launch. Just, just a little side note I wanted to add. Now, I really enjoyed playing through the story. I also really enjoyed how it was episode-based, kind of like the show. It also helps that the designers went with the art style that they went with. 3D environments with 2D characters. Now at first I thought that this was probably going to clash pretty hard, but I was so pleasantly surprised to see that no, the world actually looks good. It actually looks like these characters belong in a 3D world of Bluey. And I have to say, to capture that world in 3D, the designers here did an excellent job. Overall, it's pretty nice. However, there are a few cracks in the surface, like I said there was going to be, and I do kind of want to point them out. The animation is something I want to start with because the animation in this game looks stilted. Now, I just said that the art style looks like you are playing the show. That is true to some degree. However, the animation here looks a bit off. It just doesn't look right to me, and it definitely doesn't scream show quality, even though I think this game was animated in the same program the show was made in, so I don't understand the problem there. But something I would have liked to have a little bit more polish on it was the controls. Now, if you're just running around the area, jumping, mostly it's fine. Like, I'm saying 95% of the time the controls work beautifully. But the other 5% does show up a lot. 
By looking at this footage, it looks like that I have never played a video game in my entire life. It looks like me and my girlfriend don't even know what button makes them jump. Bandit's mouth. Wh what is going on there? Wh wh what is going on with Bandit's mouth? Why is it as blurry as it is? I, I don't understand. Why why is it like that? And there's this one part in the Chattermax episode where we are supposed to find flowers to feed the Chattermax. However, when I got to it, Bluey and Bingo suddenly teleported back to the living room with Uncle Radley, still having the conversation with Chili and Bandit on the balcony with the flowers. And now there's two Radleys here too as well. Well guys, that is going to do it for this video. The Bluey video game is out. Are you guys playing it? Have you experienced it? Have you watched Bluey at all? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll get to you when I get to you. I have an Instagram, I have an X, and you can go follow me. Both of those links will be in the description down below. And hey, while you're down there, can we try to get this video up to 10 likes? That'll be much appreciated. And also, while you're down there, can I get you to hit that subscribe button and the bell for post notifications? Because I wouldn't want you to miss a single upload of mine, and it takes like 3 seconds, and I would really appreciate it. And for those daredevils who want to go the extra mile, I do have a Patreon, and you can feel free to donate to me if you like it's up to you it would support the channel and i would appreciate it well guys that's going to do it for me today and just remember that's the danker's difference